In other words, paradise was created before and the meaning here then is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wrote he wrote the meaning here is that he wrote that he will soon create this group and that group right so he will before the creation of the heavens and earth he wrote that we'll create this group and he will create that group and that for paradise there will be certain inhabitants and for the hellfire there will be certain inhabitants and when he created adam alayhi salam he took from adam his offspring and he took uh, he took uh, a qabda which is you know a qabda like like a handful and he said these are in paradise and another qabda which and about which he said that these are in hellfire these are in hellfire so this means that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created paradise and he made a group of people who will enter it and he made hellfire and he also created a group of people who will enter it and so this is why at tahawi then said after this imam at tahawi rahimahullah ta'ala he then said after this faman sha'a minhum ila al janna fadlan minhu wa man sha'a minhum ila an nar adlan minhu so he said that whomever he willed whomever he willed amongst them to go to paradise was out of a bounty from himself was out of fadl was out of a favor from himself and whomever he willed amongst them to go to the hellfire it is out of adl it is out of justice from himself so so far we've established that this paradise then is not the paradise on earth it is the eternal paradise and that this was created before you know it was already created before the soul was blown into adam alayhi salam and that when allah you know he created this paradise and he created hellfire he created inhabitants for them and he knew when he took the souls out of the uh, back of adam alayhi salam and he knew and he took uh, a qabda uh, you know, like a group and they were to be the inhabitants of paradise and another qabla and they were to be the inhabitants inhabitants of the hellfire now this now now th this is where you have to really stop and think because here now comes the connection to the issue of al qadr uh, this is where we move into what connection this has with the topic of al qadr and why it became a topic of debate and controversy and contention and you know our argument and we can begin by a number of points and the first point here is that when we say here as at tahawi says that whomever he willed from that offspring to go to paradise it was out of a bounty fadl fadl from himself and whomever he willed to go into hellfire from them it is out of adl meaning it is out of justice from himself now this statement needs some some elaboration and so there is a number of uh, masail a number of uh, points so the first point is that when we say al fadl when we speak of al fadl which this means this is like a bounty and a favor from allah a bounty and a favor from allah so those whom he knew would enter paradise then it is a bounty and a favor from allah al fadl is al ikram al ikram is to give to honor someone to give honor to someone now when a person enters paradise how has he entered paradise and where is the fadl where is the fadl where is the bounty and the favor of allah in that in that person entering into paradise where is the angle how do we see this angle of allah showing fadl showing uh, a favor and a bounty to this person when we consider the fact that in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that entry into paradise is by way of the servant's actions he's connected the two together 
right? So as an example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to the people of paradise, أُدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Allah says, enter paradise, bima, ba, bima, with the letter ba, bima, on account of that which you used to do. Surah Al-Nahl, Surah 16, verse number 32. And likewise, with respect to the people of hellfire, he said, Sorry? 16 verse 32. Surah Nahl, 16 verse 32. But with respect to the people of hellfire, he said, um, Jaza'an bima kanu bi ayatina yajhadun. Allah, he says, as a recompense, meaning after they went to uh, uh, hellfire, as a recompense for that, for the fact that they used to reject our signs. Jaza'an bima kanu bi ayatina yajhadun. So in other words, the people of hellfire are entering hellfire because they earned through their deeds, they earned evil through their own deeds. And these are just some examples. There are many other examples in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attaches entry into paradise and the reward in paradise with the actions that people left forth in the, in, in, in the life of this world. And likewise, entry into hellfire because of the actions that people left forth in the life of this world. Now, from these actions, or these righteous actions, the greatest of them is Tawheed. Is singling out Allah Azza wa Jal with worship. And this is the greatest suburb. This is the greatest sub. This is the greatest suburb of entering into paradise. And likewise, the, from the evil actions, the greatest of those evil actions is a shirk. And so this is also a suburb, a cause and a reason of entering into hellfire. However, However, and this is the question now, is this suburb, is this suburb, is this reason or this cause on its own sufficient to enter a person into paradise or hellfire? Right? Now, before we go any further in this explanation, we can see, just to give you uh, examples in the worldly sense, that we can see that when we look around us, we see that there are asbab, there are causes behind things. And sometimes those causes, it's not simply one cause leading to one effect. Rather, it's a multiple causes which have to come together to lead to the effect. By way of example, if you plant a seed in the soil, if you plant a seed in the soil, just because the seed is in the soil and the soil is a suburb for the seed to split and grow does not mean that that seed will indeed split and grow because there are other factors which are involved from those factors is that there has to be water moisture from those factors is that there has to be um, the temperature has to be right the temperature has to be right and from those factors you know so that basically the point being that there are numerous other factors and one of the examples that often Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymi gives as well uh, w when he speaks of, of these uh, issues and what's connected to them is for example when uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that just because a man has relations with his wife their child will always be produced because there are other factors that have to come together in order for there to be success you know that for, the, for there to be successful uh, conception and so the point being here that when we think of these examples in the worldly sense, then in a similar way, a person's actions on their own, even if they are one suburb, or if they, if they are a suburb, a cause, or if they are a part of the suburb, it does not mean that a person, in actual fact, goes to paradise just because of his actions, even though they are a suburb. And so the way to understand this, as I said, is similar to the, the, the examples which I gave of the seed. Rather, that which has to be present in order for this goal to be achieved is that there has to be the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There has to be the rahmah 
the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a person to actually enter into paradise. And ultimately, a person is only entering paradise because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we shall see. For that reason, we see mentioned in the authentic hadith that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَن يُدْخِلَ أَحَدُكُمْ عَمَلُهُ الْجَنَّةِ لَن يُدْخِلَ أَحَدُكُمْ أَوْ أَحَدَكُمْ عَمَلُهُ الْجَنَّةِ That the action of one of you, لَن يُدْخِلَ أَحَدَكُمْ عَمَلُهُ الْجَنَّةِ That the action of one of you will not enter him into paradise. And then it was said to the Messenger of Allah, not even you, O Messenger of Allah, and he said, وَلَا أَنَا إِلَّا أَنْ يَتَغَمَّدَنِي إِلَّا أَنْ يَتَغَمَّدَنِي اللَّهُ بِرَحْمَةٍ مِّنْهُ وَفَضْلٍ Not unless, neither, neither, neither myself, unless Allah showers me with his mercy from himself and with his bounty. So this shows that there is an asal, there is a, a primary basis, the first basis on account of which Person enters paradise, and that is by the mercy, the rahmah of Allah, and the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we clearly see in this hadith. Bi rahmati minhu wa fadlin. By way of, way of mercy from Allah, and by way of fadl. Now, this fadl, this bounty or this favor which comes from Allah, it basically means al imtinan, al i'ta, al ikram. Which basically means that Allah is ennobling a person, Allah is honoring a person, Allah, Allah is you know, giving honor to a person, Allah is granting to a person, Allah is honoring a person. So, uh, this means that actions, even though a person will receive reward for them, that you know, reward is due for them, in reality what we are seeing is, it is Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the mere fact that he is the one rewarding for those actions. Where does the asal lie with? Does it lie with the servant who brought the actions? Or is it with Allah who is the one who's rewarding those actions? Right? We see that the asal, meaning that the basis upon which a person is entering paradise, it is, it is with Allah. Because Allah is the one who is, is the one who is granting in the first place. Right? Not only is he the one who is granting the reward, he is the one who actually gave the servant success in the first place to actually do the actions to begin with. Right? So ultimately we see that all of it goes back to Allah, it is fadl from Allah. And even though a person is being rewarded for his deeds, ultimately the affair goes back to the fadl of Allah. The fact that he gave tawfiq, he gave success to the abd, to the servant, to do those actions in the first place. And that he is the reward, he is the recompenser. It shows ultimately everything goes back to the uh, uh, ikram, the honoring, i'ata, the giving, the granting, imtinan, the bestowing the favor. All of this goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in this respect. So the servant was aided, the servant was supported, he received i'ana from Allah, tawfiq from Allah, and this shows that the fact that a person was able to do righteous actions in the first place, that originated from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, from Allah's guidance, from Allah's fadl, from Allah's aid, from Allah's tawfiq. And so a person's actions really are a natija. They are a result of something. That something came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is that something? It is, it is guidance from Allah, it is sending books, it is, reveal, it is revealing books, sending messengers, giving the servant hearing, seeing, ability to think, ability to reason, ability to choose, giving him the qudra, the, 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 the ability. All of this, where did it come from? It come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the, so, the, so the, the, the origin of a servant's actions, Right, it, it, it came, it was bestowed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of that. And so from all of these angles we see, we see that the fadl, when a person enters paradise, it is due to fadl from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala primarily, and his actions have played a part in that. Right? But that part 
played by those actions isn't the crucial part. Right? It is something that Allah is recompensing as a bounty and a favor from Himself. Is all, all of that clear to everybody? Yeah? Now, the second issue then is that we said, at Taha, we said, Woman uh, Sha'a Minhum Ilan Nari Adlan Minhu. As for the one who goes to hellfire from them, then this is, this is, then this is out of Allah's justice. This is from the Adal, justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He behaves with a man, He deals with a man on account of whatever He deserves. Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not bestow any favor or bounty upon Him. Unlike the other people. With the other people, He bestowed a favor and a bounty upon them. And such people, such people will be held to account, they will be able to dispute their account, and then they will be given that which they deserve after all of that, and they will enter the fire because they deserve to enter the hellfire, and all of this is due to justice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He knew that which their hearts contained. And whether they actually desired guidance or not, he knew in their hearts that they didn't really desire guidance, they didn't really pursue guidance. And so whatever they receive is out of justice and, uh, uh, you know, justice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah did not aid them, did not give them tawfiq like he did with the first group. Even though he gave them everything that would be sufficient for them to desire guidance, right? So he gave them what? He gave them hearing, gave them seeing, gave them the ability to understand, the ability, the ability to choose, and then he gave them the qudra, he gave them limbs, he gave them feet, he gave them hands to do things or to avoid things. Up until this point, Allah has been just, right? Up until this point, Allah has shown them the right way, that this way is the path of safety, and this way is the path of destruction. He's made that clear and plain to them by way of the books and messengers. So guidance has reached them. Now, after this point, Allah may choose to give aid to a servant. Allah may choose to give tawfiq, success to a servant, by putting him in circumstances whereby a person desires and receives guidance. Allah may choose to do that. This is what we call tawfiq from Allah. An ilham from Allah, inspiring a servant and giving him success in guidance. Or he may just, just leave him, just uh, leave him with whatever he has given him already. Right? And so if he leaves him and abandons him with whatever he has given already, then this is not injustice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this is a crucial thing to understand here. This is not injustice. Because, because whatever Allah has given to a servant, it is... It, it, it is, you know, he's given him hearing, seeing, ability to think. He's shown him signs that he can see with his, with his, with his eyes through which he will, you know, to, to, by which it is natural. And an instinct in him, Allah has created him with an instinct, of fit, with a fitrah, to recognize that there is a creator who deserves to be worshipped and thanked for all of the bounties and favors which I can see with the vision of the eyes. Right, so he sees the, the night and the day and the rain and the wind and the sun and the moon and the, 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 you know, the, the animals he benefits from and the trees and the plants and all those things which everybody can see. All of that with the instinct in his heart he can see and with the, the faculties of thinking he knows that there is a creator who is to be thanked and worshipped. Then Allah sent revealed books, then he sent messengers to make the path very, very clear and to inform his servants of, the, of his legislations, how they are to worship him. All of that, Allah has established justice upon his servants. He has established the word upon his servants. There is absolutely no excuse whatsoever. Except that we know that there are some exceptions to this, you know, like the uh, child who hasn't reached maturity, the old senile person to whom the message came late, people who lived in a time where the remnants of Prophet had, had, had gone or whatever. We know there are, well, there are exceptions like that. But in general, 
this has established the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now after this, if Allah, Allah chooses not to give any ilham, i'ana, tawfiq, irshad, right, which is, which is to give direct success, guidance to a person, Allah has not been unjust. This is not an injustice to Allah. Rather, it is just, it, rather the way we see it is that Allah from His bounty and mercy, even though He's not obliged to, He has shown favor and mercy to some from His servants and given them tawfiq to enter into, to be guided, to worship Him alone, to be righteous, to avoid sin. And, you know, He allowed them to enter the paradise. Right? So the point being that here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has acted with in uh, has has not has not acted with injustice. There is complete justice in his actions. Now there are some verses in the Quran uh, to uh, which are a reference or which relate to what we've been discussing. So by way of example, Allah says about the people of Iman. But Allah has beautified Iman and has, has, has made beloved Iman and has, and has uh, uh, beautified it in your hearts. وَالْإِسْيَانِ And He has made detestable to you disbelief and sin and disobedience. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الرَّاشِدُونَ They are the ones who are guided. Surah Al-Hujurat, Surah 49, verse number 7. So here we see that Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, in some people he has made iman to be, uh, you know, beautified and loved in their hearts. And so he gave them fadl to this group of people in a way that he didn't give fadl to other people. Rather with other people, he just behaved with justice. He was just with them. But with this group of people, he gave, you know, he gave some fadl in that he beautified Iman in their hearts because he saw that in their hearts there was goodness, there was khair, and that those hearts were seeking and desiring guidance. A heart which seeks and desires guidance, wants guidance from his Lord, that Allah will, you know, inshallah, if Allah wills, he will give tawfiq to that heart. So he sees in those hearts that they seek uh, uh, guidance. But as for those who do not desire goodness and guidance, they don't want to really hear it. They're not interested in it. They don't really want to be guided by it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He behaves with them with justice. So meaning, meaning to say that you have been given hearing, seeing, thinking, reflecting. You've been given the ability to choose and decide and to think. You've been given the faculties, the bodies, qudra, uh, feet, hands and so on so forth with which to you know, act. I sent you messengers, I showed you signs all around you and then books that were revealed to direct you to these signs and messengers to make the path clear to you. And after all of this, after all of this, if in your hearts there was not the desire to seek guidance, then I shall leave you like that. I shall leave you like that. I, will, I shall not give you success. I shall not give you fadl and tawfiq and i'ana. Right, but as for the ones in the hearts in these people, to whom you have used your hearing, your seeing, the faculties of, of, of thinking and reflecting, and you know, sent you books and sent you messengers who direct you to these signs, and you see these signs, and therefore now you want guidance, you seek guidance, you desire guidance. Then, out of fadl and rahma from myself, I will give you tawfiq in being guided. Right, so. This means that no evil can be ascribed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Evil only comes from the servant. Right? Evil comes from evil comes from the servant himself. Allah is not unjust in any respect of the word. Evil comes, evil is in Allah's creation. Evil is not in the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you can grasp this point right here then you will see through all of the confusion that has entered into this topic when a people began to deny the qadr of Allah and another group of people began to exaggerate in the qadr of Allah. So think about this point here, that 
That because Allah saw in some hearts the desire for guidance, He gave them fadl from Himself and gave them tawfiq. And because another group of people did not desire guidance, did not desire guidance, despite being given all of those things around them, the asbab that would that should make them want guidance. Like, as we said, hearing, seeing, faculties, thinking, reflecting, qudra, books, messengers, the signs of Allah everywhere in the horizons, in their own selves, and they didn't desire it, then this evil came from themselves. From themselves. And Allah simply behaved with them with justice, with adal. He didn't oppress them at all. So if you understand that point, um, and then with this we see, we, we see mentioned in the Qur'an, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلِيهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ Indeed, those who disbelieve. So the disbelief came from them. It came from them. Notice how in the other ayah, Allah mentioned about the people of faith, how he beautified iman to their hearts. That came from Allah. The beautification came from Allah. As we said in the ayah, وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانِ وَزَيَّنَهُ uh, وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ So in, the, in those hearts, Allah beautified iman in their hearts. With respect to the people of disbelief, what is said? It is said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Those who disbelieved, meaning that this came from themselves. The disbelief came from themselves. So again, notice the difference between do, these two things. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Really those who disbelieve, it is the same to them whether you warn them or not warn them. They will not believe Allah has sealed their hearts. Meaning that the kufr, the disbelief came from their hearts, came from themselves. And so therefore irrespective of whether you warn them or not warn them, they will not believe. So Allah sealed their hearts. Did Allah seal the hearts from the beginning, from the outset? No. Allah did not seal the heart of any, any person. He gave him seeing, thinking, reflecting, the faculties, guidance, books, messengers, signs. But these people did not want guidance. They turned away from guidance. So Allah sealed their hearts. And then some other ayat in the Quran, which indicate that kufr is to be found from the servants aslan by way of example inna alladhina amanu thumma kafaru thumma amanu thumma kafaru thumma azdadu kufra lam yak lam yakun illahu liyaghfira lahum wa la liyahdiyahum sabila indeed those who believe then disbelieve then believe then disbelieve then increase in their disbelief allah is not allah is not one to forgive them and not to guide them to the path. And uh, similar ayat in, in the Quran, in, in other parts of the Surah An Nisa, Surah 4, verse 137. And the previous verses were in at the beginning of Surah Al Baqarah, Surah 2, verses 6 and 7. And likewise, another ayah In Alladina Kafaru wa Zalamu, Lam Yakuni la Huli Yagfira la Humalali Yahdiahum Tariqa. إلا طريق جهنم خالدين فيها أبدا. Verily those who disbelieve and وظلموا and are oppressive, are wrongdoers, not is Allah one who will forgive them and not to guide them to the path or to a path except the path to جهنم residing therein forever. سورة النساء again, سورة four verse number one sixty eight one sixty nine. Now, when Allah سبحانه وتعالى behaves with justice to a person, it means that he simply leaves him to himself. Right? Allah leaves him to rely upon himself. Meaning that Allah did not aid and support him like he did with those who desired guidance. Right? So this is other. This is justice. This is not injustice. This is justice. Allah simply left him to his own devices. After having given him all of those things, so therefore, this can never ever be injustice on behalf of Allah subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala uh, because, uh, you know, in this heart, there was a love for something of evil and a hatred of goodness 
And for that reason, Allah did not aid and support this particular individual. Now, now it, it, obviously, there's, there's more to this, uh, but uh, if we stop at this point, there are some other issues that come to mind now, uh, such as, for example, um, the, you know, many, of the, many of the kuffar from the, the disbelievers and the atheists, you know, they will come and they will say, you know, they will argue that why is there so much injustice and, you know, um, you know they'll bring these like common arguments to do with um, if, if, as they say, if God knows what he's going to create and then how can he, you know, how, how can he put people in hellfire uh, if he already decreed upon them? And so the, all, the, all these similar arguments that you see often from the, from, from the disbelievers, uh, from the atheists, uh, all of these are really uh, emotional arguments. They don't make any sense because, you know, if you don't believe that Allah doesn't exist to begin with in the first place and there is no paradise and no hellfire, then why, why are you acting and behaving as if there is and complain, complaining that this is injustice? So, this, so as soon as an atheist use, uses this argument, this argument is not allowed for that person. You're not allowed to use this argument because you haven't actually established and accepted to begin with that there indeed is a creator. Right? So if you're arguing, well, this is injustice, that means you have to accept that there is, there is a creator. And your problem is one of just not being able to understand how can, this, how can we reconcile this with the mercy of Allah and the justice of Allah. Right? So either accept, yes, there is a creator, or say there isn't. If there is, then we can discuss your misconception. If there isn't, then this question is illegitimate. So let's go back and argue whether there is a creator or not a creator. So uh, the, the point uh, being here that there are enough signs for a disbelieving atheist uh, to uh, realize that behind this creation there is indeed uh, a creator. Uh, but what we see is that this, this atheist is just kind of really deluding himself that he thinks everything is just an illusion, right? So although we see things clearly with the eyes, and we observe clear signs with, with our eyes, this person thinks that it's, in, it's an illusion, that the reality is not like this, everything we see is just an illusion, everything is just by chance, everything is just by accident, everything is just, you know, without purpose, without direction, without any goal, without any objective. And all of this is nonsense. The person knows this to be complete nonsense in his, in, in his heart. So he's deluding himself. He's denying what his eyes see clearly. And as a result of that, he doesn't really want guidance. He's not after guidance. He doesn't want guidance. He doesn't want goodness. And for that reason, he hasn't been given tawfiq by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there really isn't any basis for him to be... Uh, to be making any kind of uh, complaints. I think what we'll do is I think we can stop at this point because it's at this point now that we're going to move into the issue of Al-Qadr and good and evil being decreed upon a servant, that Allah decrees good and evil upon a servant. So I think at this point it'll be a good place to stop uh, at this point and we'll take this I issue up uh, in more detail in the next lesson. Inshallah ta'ala. So uh, I hope that's fairly clear to everybody. If there's any questions, uh, anything that is not clear, then inshallah uh, we can have a, a short time for any kind of questions that you might have on this topic. Yeah, so, so basically if we reflect upon the last century or less than a century, then if you start with radio communications, which people had radios in their homes. And then after that came uh, television, or basically it wasn't television first, it was cinema that they would go to and initially they used to just play news, news that they would get from different parts of the world and then it would be played in, in cinemas. And then after that eventually, um, televisions in the homes became like a luxury, you know, that the rich would have. This is, you know, maybe in the 50s or 60s. Uh, until it became very popular, and it didn't really, to be honest, not even not even till the eighties did really everybody have a TV in the house. Before that, it was still not everybody actually would have a, a TV. And so, towards the end of the eighties, early nineties was the start of the the mobile phones, which were very very rare, but they were just very basic, you know. And then so now 
then with the internet and the computing which took off, personal computers that entered pretty much every house, and then now with mobile devices which every person in the house, you know, even kids of age six, seven, eight, nine are, are being given devices. Right, this means now that it's extremely, extremely rare for a person of mature age to not to hear about, you know, Islam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, you know, and, and to at least be aware of that there is a claim being made that Islam is a way of truth and the Prophet Muhammad is a, a, the last in the line of messengers, at least for a person to think that maybe, let me look into this, what is this about? You know, what is this about? And especially given that there's so much controversy being stirred uh, that you find these days. So it, it, it's, it's correct that in this day and age it is extremely difficult to find a person who can be oblivious and ignorant to uh, Islam <clears throat> and the Quran and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah knows best, maybe there could still be people, Allah knows best in some remote places that you know, no one's ever been before and there are people still living in the way that they've been living for hundreds if not thousands of years. It possibly could be Allah knows best. But in any case, uh, the Ahlul Khatra, those who die whilst there is, you know, they did not receive, that, or that the previous messengership, uh, the book was lost or distorted, and you know, they lived in that particular time, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with them in a way which, which is just and appropriate.